today we are doing a quiz on biomimicry and hopefully you'll learn a little something about it. So does anyone know what biomimicry is? No? Well, for those who haven't come across it before, it comes from the word biological and mimicry, which means we are copying them. Because things in nature have had a really long time to evolve, but the bad designs get lost through natural selection, they work super well. This means by copying them, we can make more sustainable stuff and things that work better. Sometimes biomimicry can also inspire completely new ideas uh, for things that will fix problems in everyday life. So you guys are going to be guessing what things from nature made what things for humans. We are going to show you a picture of a plant or an animal, and we want you to guess what item was influenced by it. We will show you four products, each with a color and a number. One will be correct. And also, you're only going to have a few seconds to guess, so you better think quick. For those of you playing at home, be sure to comment in the chat box what you think the correct answers are. Let's get started. Okay, first question then. So first up, we have a lotus plant, which grows floating on water in wet and muddy places and produces these beautiful pink flowers. What did we get that is designed from these? So one, we have an umbrella. Hold up your blue card if you think it's that. Two, we have the cake tin. Hold up your yellow card if you think that's the answer. Number three is some paint. Hold up your orange card if you think that one's the answer. And then the fourth option, we've got a face cloth. Hold up your, what's the other card? Green card, <laughs> if you think that's the answer. Okay, show of cards, everyone. So most people are going for blue, the umbrella. So the actual answer for that one is the paint. So I'll explain why. The um, leaves on the lotus plant have this special, very bumpy surface. And what they found is that even though they're growing in really muddy places, they actually don't get dirty. They're self-cleaning because of the texture on the leaves. So by recreating this um, structure in the like, molecular makeup of a specific type of outdoors paint, they made a paint for the outdoors of buildings that cleans itself and doesn't get dirty. Okay, second question. <laughs> So for this one, we have a firefly. OK, so the yeah. first option, we have a satellite, like what your mobile phone signal goes through. Um, that one is your blue card to vote for that one. Second one, we've got a light bulb. So yellow card for that one, if you think that's the answer. Third one, we have some running shoes. So orange card, if you think they inspired a type of running shoe. And then the fourth one, we've got a pair of reading glasses. So green card, if you think they inspired a pair of glasses. Okay, show of cards, everyone. Ooh, we've got quite a mix. Couple of people have gone for the right answer. If you're holding up your yellow card for the light bulb, yeah. I thought we'd catch you all out with that one. It seems too obvious, doesn't it? <laughs> so what they actually did is, um, obviously, fireflies do light up, I'm sure most of you know. And the way that they um, are structured on the inside of the bit that lights up refracts the light around the inside of their body, and it means that it produces a brighter amount of light for the amount of energy that they're using. So by doing that with LED light bulbs, we've managed to make more efficient light bulbs that shine brighter as well. Okay, third question. For this one, we have a kingfisher. So if you think the kingfisher inspired a train design, blue card for that one. If you think they inspired the design for a kite, yellow card for that one. If you think the kingfisher inspired a type of submarine, orange card to vote for that. And then green card if you think they inspired a type of kitchen knife. Let's see, what does everyone think? Okay, so if you voted for the train, if you're holding up your blue card, well done guys. So the specific type of train is the bullet train in Japan, which obviously is the fastest train that we have. And the original design of it, when it was going through tunnels, would build up a lot of pressure because it was going so fast. And when it came out the other end of those tunnels, it would make a really loud sonic boom that could be heard for a radius of one and a half miles, which isn't ideal for all the people living around there. 
And one of the lead engineers that was working on the bullet train was actually really avidly into bird watching. And he went away on this retreat and was watching kingfishers on this retreat and noticed that as they dive into the water, they don't make any ripples because they're so aerodynamic. So they copied the design of the shape of their beak and head, the front of these trains, and by doing that, when they go through the tunnels, they don't build up that pressure anymore and they don't make that noise. Cool. So I'm going to hand back over to Isabella for the last three questions. Well done, everyone, so far. So here we have the humpback whale, which can grow to 80 metres long, so the length of one and a half buses. So what do you think they helped us with making? So one, do you think it is a fire hose, so usually like from a fire engine, uh, a speedboat, a windmill, so a wind turbine, or a... A water tank. <laughs> Just go for the water tank. So yeah, so blue fire hose, yellow speedboat, orange wind turbine, and green a water tank. What do you guys think? That is a super mix. Okay. Yeah, so if you have orange or red, you are correct. Um, so the correct answer is the wind turbine. So they have five metre long, uh, so the, the whale has five metre long fins with small bumps in them, allowing them to breach up to 15 metres high out of the ocean. So by using the fin design, the wind turbine blades um, have, made, yeah, so have made the wind turbine blades. So this makes the turbines better at producing electricity. So how's everyone getting on so far? We're nearly, we're nearly finished. Um, next up, so next up is a termite. So these are small insects. They live in colonies. Um, so the total weight of termites on Earth is actually greater than the total weight of all the humans on Earth. Pretty cool. Um, if you think it's one, so if you think it's one, so blue, a kettle. Um, yellow is the crane. Three is a trumpet. And is a saxophone, sorry. I did I meant that. <laughs> and then four is air conditioning unit. Okay. Most of you are correct. So if you thought it was the air conditioning unit, yeah, you are correct. Um, so the example isn't actually the animal itself that gave us the inspiration, but the way the termites build their mounds. So they, uh, they allow for air to move through the passages, keeping them cool even in the desert heat. Um, by making buildings with the same sorts of passages, we can keep them cool without using electricity. So the final question. Um, so the final question then, we have the very special blue morph um, butterfly. So this is one is slightly different as we're going to have you guess a technology that isn't actually developed yet. So let's see how we all do. So what new technology do you think the butterfly inspired? Um, so one, do you think it is the invisible... Vin Invisib invisibility cloak, so that's blue. Two, we have holograms, um, which is the yellow. Three, we have the hovering car, floating car, hovering car. And then four, artificial eyes. What do you guys think? Yeah, this one's quite hard. So, most of you have gone for the hologram. Okay, well, so now the color of these butterflies is actually an important part for this one. Um, blue, is an actually, blue is actually an extremely rare color in nature. So these butterflies have scales on their wings that overlap, um, refracting light similar to a prism, which is how they get their amazing color. So if you guess the invisibility cloak or clothing, you're right. So learning how to manipulate light could help develop better computer monitors or advanced camouflage. Um, if we could figure out how to control light from different angles, we may even be able to develop stuff like the cloaking uh, device that you see on screen. Cool, amazing. Thank you so much for joining in, everyone. I hope you did all actually learn something. And, you know, like we said, looking around you in nature is a really good opportunity to find ideas for things. So, you know, maybe you'll find it yourselves. You'll be out for a walk and you'll see something that will be like, oh, yeah, that will fix that problem that I had at home. So, yeah, go try out biomimicry yourselves and tell your friends about it. <laughs>